all of my Micro Four Thirds camera gear fits within this camera bag. Well, uh, except for this one and this one. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a little tour of all of my stuff, why I have each one, what they do for me, uh, what happened to the gear that I used to have, all that kind of stuff, and, and some sample photos, why not? One thing that hasn't changed is that my everyday camera is still the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II, which is a bit of a mouthful, but despite being an old camera, it has a you know solid 16 megapixel sensor, it's got a nice metal body, it's got good single autofocus, uh, don't use this for action stuff, the ergonomics are lovely, it's really pretty, and it's small. It's a great, reliable little camera that I dearly love with a flippy screen. In my video from two years ago, I had this Panasonic Lumix GM1, which is the smallest Micro Four Thirds camera ever made. Uh, I got rid of that because I didn't like not having a viewfinder, and I found that the EM5 Mark II was small enough for anything I needed something small for. Uh, so I got rid of it. It was a lovely little camera. Uh, if I was a collector, I would definitely have kept it. I also had an Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and a Panasonic Lumix G85. Uh, both of these have been superseded by this large boy over here, which we'll get to later. On to more things I do have. Uh, this little addition is the uh, Panasonic 14mm f2.5 pancake lens. It is seriously small. I think this is the smallest autofocus lens made for Micro Four Thirds. If you chuck it on an EM5, I think it looks rather lovely. Isn't that just a cute little setup for doing street photography? Uh, the 14mm focal length is of course a 28mm equivalent for full frame. Honestly, not a focal length I use very much. The main reason I keep this is because I got it extremely cheap by buying a camera with the lens and then sold the camera for about as much as I bought it for. So this was basically a free lens. But it's really nice and gets some lovely little pictures. My collection skips straight from the 14mm to the Olympus 25mm f1.8, which means that from my video two years ago I've since gotten rid of the 12mm f2 from Olympus and the 17mm f1.8 from Olympus. Both lenses were lovely, they were great, they had these little focus clutches, great image quality. I just don't use those focal lengths and uh, sold them. The money was worth more to me than the pictures they gave me because I just didn't use them enough. But the Olympus 25mm f1.8 is a very small, very competent, very sharp, beautiful little lens that, when slapped on EM5, becomes a fantastic event photography machine. Using this for parties, small social gatherings and the like, going out and about with a group of friends into botanic gardens or on a day trip somewhere, it's just a lovely little combo to focus in on a subject, get some nice blurry backgrounds while also seeing enough of the scenery to get an idea of what's going on. It is of course the classic 50mm equivalent focal length. I'll skip over this one for now. These three lenses, the 45mm f1.8, the 60mm f2.8 macro, and the 75mm f1.8, all from Olympus, are ones that I had last time. And as a quick run over, this is probably the best bang for buck lens in the entire Micro Four Thirds system. It is a gorgeous portrait prime lens. You make some fantastic blurry backgrounds, very circular specular highlights in the out of focus backgrounds. It's just a lovely little lens and can be found really cheap on the secondhand market. Highly recommend this one, it's lovely. The 60mm macro is, is a good macro lens. It goes down to a 1 to 1 macro reproduction ratio, which means that when it's focused as close as possible, the thing that you're taking a picture of, that's in focus, is the same size as the image sensor in the camera, which is to say, you're getting a really close up photo or something. And the 75mm f1.8 is, again, my favourite lens in the Micro Four Thirds system. It still gives me absolutely gorgeous photos. It has this really tight field of view with these extremely blurry backgrounds. It's got a very sharp optics. It's unfortunately not weather sealed and it doesn't focus very close, but oh my gosh, 
this is just how my eyes want to do photography. This is just what I see when I look at a thing. This lens, this lens composes things for me. It's amazing. Oh, it's so good. A couple other lenses from last time that are no longer here. One is the 9-18mm Olympus uh, zoom lens. Again, I didn't use it very much and I didn't like that it was really plasticky and it had a lock which meant that you couldn't zoom the lens out without flicking this little thing. Ugh. It's great optically, but I couldn't justify owning it considering how much it's worth and how little I used it. There was also that absolutely bonkers 20mm ultra macro lens. I just didn't use it. Just didn't use it. It's ex It was extremely specialist. You couldn't use it as a portrait lens. It was entirely manual, very difficult to use for macro stuff. Very cool, just didn't need it. And the Panasonic 35-100mm zoom lens, that was the kit telephoto zoom for the GM1. It paired really well with the GM1 and didn't make much sense with my other gear and, and just wasn't using it. So I feel like my collection is smaller than it used to be, but this still looks like a lot of stuff. So, the one that I'm most excited about. <laughs> so this here is the Voiklander 25mm f0.95. This is a fully manual lens. It looks like a vintage lens. It, it, it's got the same sort of design as lenses from decades ago, but it's a new lens specifically for Micro Four Thirds with an ultra wide aperture of f0.95. Now, why? 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 One, blurry backgrounds, of course, but the look that you get from this lens is, it's this intentionally soft, kind of bloomy, kind of imperfect. When people talk about lens character, they're talking about the imperfections of a lens that I think look good. This lens has character. My gosh, it's gorgeous. What's also really interesting about the character of the lens is that once you stop it down to f2, f2.8 or further, it is extremely sharp and uh, almost clinical. It's so clean and optically refined once you stop it down. Physically, it's got this extremely nicely dampened focus ring, which makes manual focusing, because it is a fully manual lens, makes manual focusing lovely. It's got an aperture ring, which is clicky, but also if you turn this ring and then you turn it around, do, 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 there we go. Now I have a stepless aperture, which is great if you're a videographer, which I'm not very much. I'm primarily a photographer, but you can do that. You can just switch it between having clicks and no clicks. And it's weighty and ugh, this feels great to use. It's, it's just a lovely, lovely lens. Which brings me finally to these boys. This is the Olympus OMD EM1X. This is up until recently, the best camera that Olympus made, it got superseded by the OM system OM1. The features, it's got this big vertical grip. So when you're doing a portrait photography, you've got a built-in natural feeling handhold, which has a repeat of the shutter button, the uh, extra function buttons, the dial, the joystick, everything's there. This feels amazing to use. And I use it all the time for taking portraits of birds. And really, most of the photography I do is bird photography. And this is pretty much permanently attached to my Olympus 300mm f4 Pro. This is an extremely high quality wildlife prime lens, which on the one hand, this is big. This is uh, about one kilo for the body and about 1.2 kilos for the lens, but it's gorgeous. It's so nice. The balance is great. You've got this huge body with a massive grip to balance the gigantic lens. Obviously being an F4 300mm prime, it's got this really large front element. So there's a lot of glass in here. It's made of metal. It's weather sealed. It's got built-in image stabilization that syncs up with the camera. These two are basically all laced together like this. There'll be occasions where I want to use this for something else, maybe for a video, maybe I'm filming at a cup stacking tournament, that kind of stuff. But pretty much all the time, this is my wildlife gear. It's fast, the autofocus is great, you can use this for bird and flight photography, it's ultra weather sealed, 
the buttons on the EM1X feel amazing. The joystick works really well. This is, oh my gosh, there's so much customization. I'm not going to go into it. Oh, and I managed to skip over uh, the Olympus 12 to 100 millimeter F4 Pro IS. This is another lens that I had from last time. It is simultaneously uninteresting and fantastic. It has a constant f4 aperture all the way through the range of 12 to 100 millimeter, so 24 to 200 millimeter equivalent. It's extremely sharp. It's weather sealed. The autofocus is great. The image stabilization is great. I use it whenever I need to do photography somewhere for something, and I don't know what the situation is going to be like. And I just need every focal length possible with some great image stabilization and fantastic image quality. This just does everything except low light action photography with very blurry backgrounds at wide angles. If it's low light and static, this has some of the best image stabilization paired up with the camera in the whole world of cameras. If I want blurry backgrounds, it zooms to 100 millimeters. I can get blurry backgrounds. It's a workhorse lens. I use it when I need to get stuff done. I also want to mention a few lenses that I got after the last video and have since sold, so I sort of missed being in either. Uh, there was the Lauer 7.5mm f2 lens, that was an ultra-wide prime. It was extremely sharp, extremely small, I loved it to bits, it was metal build, beautiful to use, uh, very expensive, and that's why I sold it. I didn't use it very much. The fact that I didn't have autofocus meant that I didn't want to use it as often. Well, eh, you don't need autofocus on an ultra-wide, eh, you know quality of life thing. It's just expensive and I couldn't justify keeping it when the main thing I'd use it for was ultra-wide astrophotography and I just didn't do that very much. The other two were the Olympus 45mm and 25mm f1.2 Pro primes, which were gorgeous. Now, I've got the 25mm and 45mm f1.8, which are both fantastic and very small. The Pro f1.2 lenses were much bigger. Uh, Larger than this, but smaller than this. Ultra sharp, absolutely fantastic. They had the manual focus clutch, which was beautiful. They were weather sealed, they were amazing. I got them because of this wild deal that Olympus was doing where if you bought a brand new EM1 Mark II, they would send you an F1.2 Prime of your choice for free. And I just found cheap ones through stores and deals and then sold the bodies. So then I had these cheap Pro Prime lenses and I used them for a while and realized that I couldn't justify the cost that they were worth considering just how cheap and fantastic these are. They were amazing, but my use of them didn't warrant keeping them considering the price. Pro tip, uh, the price of the Voigtlander is very large. I didn't get this for very large amounts of money. Someone was selling off a bundle of old gear, including this lens and some other stuff, and after selling off other bits and pieces, this ended up being quite cheap. But oh my gosh, it's very expensive. The only expensive gear that I paid for, large amounts of money, is, is all of this. Which I actually use, so I can justify it. They're great gear, and I get good use out of them. This is great gear, and I use it a bit less, but it's cheaper. There were two lenses I had in my previous video that I've since sold, but forgot to mention. One of them was the Olympus 8mm f1.8 fisheye, and I sold that to side grade to the Lauer 7.5mm because I wanted something rectilinear, but I ended up selling that anyway. And the other was the Panasonic 100 to 400mm lens, which I used for wildlife photography, and obviously I upgraded from that to the Olympus 300mm Pro, and it's been very nice. Cool. And that's about it. That's uh, all my camera gear. Wait a minute, I have an entire other camera system hiding behind my EM1X. Look at that! This is my Pentax Q with both the Q01 and Q06 lenses. This is the smallest interchangeable lens camera ever made. It is so tiny. It's so tiny. It's so tiny. The sensor is smaller than the sensor in most high-end flagship smartphones these days, but it's all metal. It's got in-body image stabilization. It has a pop-up flash. It's got a rotary dial on the back. It's got a surprisingly large screen. There's a video by Matthias Berling on YouTube that goes over the entire Pentax Q system. That is, is, is dead now, but it's 
It's adorable and I love it. I take this out and about when I want something teeny tiny and just to not take things too seriously, have some fun, play with some filters. It's got a dial on the front. It's got a dial on the front for switching between different filters. That's fun. And the lenses, you see this? That lens is so small. That, so that's the, uh, is basically a 40 mil equivalent. It's a 8.5 millimeter F 1.95 lens. But it was so tiny. I love this so much. I didn't really understand what was so lovely about these cameras until I found one on Facebook Marketplace and bought it on a whim. And my gosh, it's beautiful. And this other lens that it comes with is a 15 to 45 millimeter f 2.8. So it's surprisingly fast and it's a telephoto zoom. You can get surprisingly blurry backgrounds out of it considering how absolutely minuscule the sensor is on this. It's just a good time. This is a fun time. It's not Micro Four Thirds though, but um, that is all my camera gear. I hope you had fun, because I did. <laughs> Bye. This is what I was filming on, and it's stuff I'm going to be selling. It's a GH4 and a Voigtlander 17.5mm f0.95. Uh, they came in the aforementioned bundle with uh, this one. And um, here is what it looks like with all the, the stuff in here.